So I sell Sardis Gryffindor, but a lot of people um, think I'm not Hufflepuff. <laughs> Hufflepuffs are great though. There's a whole yeah. like, there's like reclaiming of the Hufflepuff identity Hufflepuff. That's, that's happened. Yeah, Hufflepuffs are probably like the proudest. I feel, I feel like I'm a mix of Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Gryffindor, but I strongly align. I have a social justice like savior complex. <laughs> I'm Jackson Bird, and welcome to another episode of my Queer Story series. Today I am at GLAD's offices in New York City, and I am joined by Alexandra Bowles, the Senior Strategist for Global and U.S. South at GLAD. Hi! Hi! Glad <laughs> you're here! Thank you, thanks for letting me invade your office. Oh my god, thanks for invading, this is the funnest part of my day. But first, just can you tell everyone what GLAD is, for anyone who doesn't know? Yeah, so GLAD is the LGBT media advocacy organization, and basically what that means is we work with um, media outlets to give them the tools that they need to tell LGBT people stories fairly and accurately. And then we also work with LGBT people on the ground in order to help them tell their stories to those media outlets. How do you identify? I'm bisexual, I'm queer, I'm a corgi enthusiast. <laughs> so among all the other work that GLAD does, one thing that you will do is you spearhead a new holiday every October called Spirit Day. <laughs> so Spirit Day is the most visible um, anti-bullying campaign in the world. It's an opportunity every October, this year it's October 20th, well, Mark your calendars. October 20th, for people all over the world to stand up against bullying and stand in support for LGBTQ youth. How did Spirit Day begin? In 2010, um, Brittany McMillan, who is a teenager in Canada, was really moved and upset by um, a lot of the high profile stories about LGBT teens losing their lives to suicide. She went on Tumblr, she wore purple, um, and she encouraged other people who supported the LGBT community and were against bullying um, to wear purple also. And then she and Glad teamed up and together uh, they've been able to make anti-bullying a worldwide conversation. That's amazing. Yeah. And it is also Bullying Prevention Month in October too. Yeah. So that's like the perfect storm it's of perfect. awareness months. Yeah, and purple actually in the rainbow flag that stands for spirit. So it's just all like comes together. Do they all stand for different things in the flag? Apparently. I did not know that. The more you know. You recently went to the White House's first ever panel on bi issues for part of Bi Awareness Week. Yeah. What was that like? It was really cool. <laughs> so Bi Week was founded a couple years ago. Um, I'm actually a co-founder of Bi Week. Um, what? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, like. Oh my royalty. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every year it's really great um, to just see people all over the internet celebrate bisexuality. Um, and the White House event was really cool because a lot of people don't know this, but bisexuals actually make up the majority of the LGBT community. Oh wow. Um, but they're often really excluded from traditionally gay or straight spaces. So it's really, really cool to get national leaders and experts from like all different fields and all different backgrounds and in one room and talking mm -hmm. about policy and issues and their experiences. Another thing that a lot of people don't know is that the majority of LGBT youth are bisexual. We've seen so many studies about how kids today, kids today, <laughs> are, you know, identifying as not gay and not straight. So they would fall under the bisexual umbrella. The Movement Advancement Project just put out a report called Invisible Majority, and mm -hmm. some of the things that they highlight in that report is that 40% of bi students actually consider um, suicide at some point in their lives, and a third of bisexual students actually attempt suicide. That's very close to the trans numbers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which is just, you know, staggeringly more than gay or lesbian or certainly straight people. Yeah, and there's so much overlap between people who are both bi and trans as well yeah. and navigating those identities and struggling with bullying and bi kids face a lot more um, risk behaviors, they're exposed to more violence and all these things impact not just their self-esteem in their own personal lives but it really affects their academic excellence as well and their opportunities to achieve. I see Spirit Day and Bi Week is definitely overlapping issues and there's always a really strong turnout of bi support for Spirit Day too. Are you ready for the lightning round? I don't know. <laughs> Is anyone ever ready? <laughs> what are three ways the media can be more responsible when covering LGBTQIA people or topics? Number one, the media can talk to LGBT people, which they don't often do. And number two, they can find LGBT angles to stories that they don't immediately consider. You know, if I hypothetically had a friend who was writing an article on dating apps, LGBT people not only use dating apps very frequently, but they have unique experiences. Yeah. Um, and so that would be a great way to get their voices in there. And number three is 
visitglad.org and check out our resource kits. <laughs> for real though, they yeah. are the best resource kits for journalists in terms of like what is the terminology as it changes yeah. rapidly sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. What was your favorite recess activity? Okay, this is really embarrassing. Oh. My friends and I used to make up our own games a lot. We um, invented like a bunny earring, you know, like bunny ears. Oh, like, yeah. Like a bunny ear um, like troop. And so we would like stake out like different like people, the bunny ear, different teachers. We'd have like people who would like distract them. <laughs> Um, and it was very, it was very official. <laughs> wow, that is such an elementary school thing. I, we took it really seriously. Yeah. If you turned into a fruit, what fruit would you be? I would be a peach. Because you're a peach? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a peach. <laughs> so what are the religious freedom acts that people talk about? Religious freedom acts, or RIFRAs, as they're often shorthanded, they're kind of popping up all over. It's legislation that's used basically as a tool um, to kind of co-opt religion from people and say basically that it's an opportunity to deny LGBT people equal service, equal access to resources. And a lot of people think that they're not issues anymore or that, you know, once things get media attention that they are repealed, but mm. it's not true. And legislature is not in session right now, but they will be again very soon. And we're expecting to see all sorts of anti-LGBT bills pop up across the country. In the majority of states, you can still be fired perfectly legally for your sexual orientation or your gender identity. Um, and referees also suck because <laughs> um, they perpetuate this false notion that a person cannot be both LGBT and a person of faith. I'm a person of faith. I know tons of people of faith who are LGBT. Mm -hmm. My bishop growing up uh, was gay. My priest is wow, gay. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. What awesome <laughs> representation to have as a kid. I know. This church is super queer. For a lot of people, myself included, it's it's their faith that really drives their mission, their work for equality, their work for justice. And I am personally offended that some folks think that, it, that they can use my religion against me. And that's why it's so important to vote in your local elections. If you go to glad.org slash vote, <laughs> or also if you check out MTV's Elect This campaign. Yeah, um, great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much accessible information on what these issues are and how they relate to, you know, folks like you and me. One final question yeah. for you, which is how can people watch and get involved with Spirit Day? The cool thing about Spirit Day is that there's a range of ways to get involved and some of them are super easy. First of all, and most importantly, um, everyone wear purple on October 20th. Go purple, show your support. I wore mine to get a head, head start. I totally forgot. I meant to. It's okay. You can borrow my card. I've got time. I've got time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Run to H&M. You'll be great. Take the pledge online to go purple. Take the Spirit Day Challenge to get other people to go purple. Awesome. Um, check out Glad's resource kit. You can do anything you want. So if you want to start an event at your school, if you want to write to your politicians, write a story for your local newspaper, go on social media, make a YouTube video. Like there are so many ways you can participate. In the comments today, I want you all to tell me when you've taken the Spirit Day pledge or challenge. Don't forget to subscribe for more Queer Street videos. Happy Spirit Day. Thank you again. Thanks to all of you for watching, and I'll see you next time.